you have to start seeing things from God's perspective. That thing you're going through right now, it's hard. But he's working something in you. This is what he spoke to me earlier this year. He said, I put my people on the potter's wheel. Look at somebody and say, you're just spinning around. And it's okay if you're spinning around, but then all of a sudden comes that smashing of his hand. Then he starts remaking you. And you're going to look better than what you looked. You know, you have to look at things from the right perspective. So this is what I want to work with us. Go ahead, Chad. Let's move forward. Uh, This is what it's like going into this year ahead. Scary. Well, not scary, just apprehensive. So you're going to have to determine if you're going to try to see what's what's ahead. Uh, That's what Pascal prayed for you. You can see what's going on. But you're going to have to look for it. I find lots of people are so caught up in their own self, they can't see around them. And so you're going to have to look. Remember that picture because that's the way you're going to be looking this year. (laughs) You, You need to be checking out some things. All right? Now, keep going. Now, I said this morning, we're moving from the swamp to the land of the giants. Say, I hope this thing gets better before the night's over. (laughs) But we are. But the giants are where the promise is. And you have to see it like that. And that was what happened with those guys. Once they, he took the 10, the 12 top leaders sent them in because they wanted to see what was ahead because they wouldn't just listen to what Moses was telling them. So they got sent into the promised land, and while they're there, everything God said was going on. But then they saw the opposition, and they said, this looks too bad for us. We out of here. Matter of fact, they were so wanting to be out of their promise, they said, we want to go back to the mud pits. Now, here's what I want to tell you. When you slander what God's doing in your life, uh, it, it produces a consequence on you. So be careful not to slander the promise. Now, Caleb and Joshua didn't, but you know what the Word says about them? They had a different spirit. Now, put your hand right here again. That's what God wants to do with us right now. He wants to make us have a different spirit. See, they had a different spirit. I have studied that for years, what a different spirit looks like. We have to be different. And that's what's so important for us as we advance into this season ahead. Now, how do we get a few keys for this new land ahead? That's really key. First of all, you're going to have to keep some sort of revelatory window open because we need heaven. We don't need to just sing about it. And let's thank God for the Binions. That was awesome tonight. Let's thank God for them. They were incredible. But we're going to have to keep heaven flowing up and down. Now, hear what I'm saying to you. You're going to have to say, oh, Lord, the angels need to be here now. You're going to have to recognize angels in your midst. You're going to have to know the presence of God. But most of all, Holy Spirit is, because we're in a year of Holy Spirit, you're going to have to let him teach you the voice. Now, hear me. You're going to have to know when you are ruling by your voice. See, here's what happens with our voice. You know, part of my background is in a field called cognitive thinking. What happens when you let that voice in you start running, before long you have had as many as 40 conversations in as much as five minutes. And before long, things start speaking back to you. Okay? 
So we've got to learn the voice. Holy Spirit has a voice. God has a voice. The Father has a voice. And if you've got all this trauma from your earthly father, you're not going to see the Father or hear the Father's voice. And then, of course, Jesus has a voice. Go through. See how they speak. See how they operate it. See what the way they say things. So when you hear, all of a sudden, you know the voice is speaking to you. His voice. It can be through His, He's a, a, a triune God. It can be His voice. But you've got to learn Holy Spirit. Because, I'm. <laughs> Remember when we were in a, a, a Baptist church one time and on, I was on staff and they said, we don't want to get into the Holy Spirit stuff. I said, why not? And they said, we want to just stick with Jesus. I said, but Jesus isn't down here. I said, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father and lets me go in and access the Father when I need Him through His blood. I have access to the Father. Holy Spirit is down here. And you just don't want to get to know Him? Listen, people, we want to know the third person that is walking amongst us. We want to know that... <laughs> I'm about to blow, it's real simple, but he chose to live inside of you. Look at somebody and say, that's a miracle right there. <laughs> and some way or another, he's got to work his way out through you. And so you're going to have to get to know him so he can work and all of a sudden come out of us. Now, I'm going to say, this is prophetic. I hope the other speakers will say it. There's going to be a coming out party this year. And the and Holy Spirit says, I'm going to work my way out through my people. Now, put your hand right here. And say, I, I, Lord, uh, Spirit, just find your way out. I, Holy, you've got to learn to talk to Holy Spirit. Embrace him. He chose to dwell in you. Uh, tell somebody else, that's a miracle right there, see? And so you're going to have to make him at home in you. And he, he's not there with a bunch of rules and regulations. He's there because he enjoys dwelling in you. Listen, people, you've got more going for you than you think. God himself started drawing you so a portion of him could live in you. Is that amazing? And flood up through your uniqueness. I, we took a picture of that lady up front this, this morning that had her, fing, her fingernails worked. Uh, Chad, I said, Chad, look at those fingernails. <laughs> I'd never seen anything that unique. I said, get pictures of that. <laughs> That's the way we are. Look at your fingernails. You are unique. Your thumbprint is unique. You are different. And what you want to do is develop a different spirit this year. I'm not going to tell you just get out of fear because you're going to have to develop a different spirit. And then you're going to have to be different. Think about Joshua and Caleb when all of those other ten leaders were spreading all that fear through the camp. I mean, and here they are about to get positioned for 40 years in this desert place with one outfit and one meal of quail, and then this manna that's falling from heaven, and they, they have to pick it up double portion on a certain day. That's going to be it. No new shoes, ladies. <laughs> One 
One pair of shoes, one outfit. Could you imagine if I, I would have to really say, do I have a different spirit or do I want to kill those other people? I don't know that I can make it in one outfit. You, you, you see what I'm saying to you? You've got to just say, Lord, you have got to work out a lots of things in here so I'm different from what all is around me. 